Raho to be here, Punch Out Boxing. Delighted to be here with the Serbian Sledgehammer, Slavisa Gegic. Did I pronounce that right? It's so close, it's uh, Slavisa Gegic, but Slav is easy, it's hard for everyone to, a lot of people to pronounce it. Yeah, my uh, Serb is very limited, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you really came to the attention just a couple of weeks back uh, in that losing effort against Dan Francis for the Southern Area welterweight title. Um, been inactive for two years, only 4 0. You'd only fought journeyman up till then, straight in to a title fight. And my God, uh, we all came away thinking, wow, this kid can fight. But before we go into that, can you tell us a bit about your background, um, your boxing background, what you've achieved in the amateurs, etc.? Um, my background, I'm um, Serbian Croatian, I'm mixed, I'm from Croatia, my family came here just because, you know, as most people do, better life. Um, boxing wise, I was at Islington Boxing Club for my whole amateur career. 36 bouts, 32 wins, a um, number of different sort of tournaments, uh, championships I went through, um, some bells here and there as well. Um, it was a good journey over there. After that, I turned professional in, I think it was 21. It was just after, or just finishing of COVID. I had that one year where I fought four different uh, journeymen and then I had a consistent injury throughout the four fights that started from the first, which I finally had to take time out, where I took about, I think six months to nine months out, saw a specialist, um, everything was sorted. And I just had a little bit of a break, you know, changing stuff, work, everything. And then I'm back now and I just felt, um, I just wanted to carry on where I was after that fight. I was planning to do what I was going to do anyway whatever the opponent in this case it was Dan Francis so I just wanted to jump straight back in the mix that was uh, some ballsy move like I said because uh, obviously Dan, Dan had been active and you hadn't and uh, your original opponent Jake Hent he, he dropped down a weight so decided not to, not to take the fight with you he went up actually he fought at 69 against Bermain Sanchez on the same show oh, okay. alright yeah did, did that give a reason why they didn't want to fight you? <laughs> that's, that's my answer that's, that's my answer well, having seen the way you fought against Dad, he made the right decision, uh, maybe. Um, yeah, like I said, though, uh, hell of a fight, two years out. Um, I mean, you, were, were you even prepared for a 10-rounder? Mentally, I was. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, we had, what, two weeks to jump in. So I did, you know, two, I think two and a half, three spas to get ready for it, which I'm always fit anyway, so that's never a problem for me. Um, and I don't mind the long rounds. I think it was more the sharpness, uh, the timing, and just having my legs really under me. So I knew I could do the 10 rounds. That was never a problem. I was always going to finish the rounds, um, and I felt I could do well. Same as the scorecard said. I think he took six, I took four rounds. So one round away from being a draw after two years out. So I knew that I can do what I need to. I think I just needed that one fight to get me back moving again. So the next one, I should be able to up it. Yeah, and you sh like I said, you showed a hell of a lot. Um, endurance clearly there. Got a solid set of whiskers on you, because uh, I mean, I don't know how hard Dan hits. Uh, but a couple of times you've taken shots before. Wow, is he going to go? But then you just come straight back. He, he, I would say Dan was very sharp. Um, he's strong physically. I mean, you see the shape of him. Um, I just, I think it's the experience as well. I do feel I'm a lot more experienced than him. Um, that's what I felt. That's why I took it as well against him or against Henty if it was originally, wherever the case was. Um, but no, he's, he was sharp, he was tough, but he took some shots himself. Um, it's a good fight. Yeah. yeah, fantastic fight. And like I said, your, your stock's just gone up. Uh, are you going to stick with welterweight? For now I am, just while I'm getting my weight in order, because I'm sure even if you were at the fight you saw, I didn't look in the best shape in the world. I had a couple people tell me as well, what were you doing? Um, but I just wanted to get back in. And those two weeks, I think, they, at least they got me moving. Um, I'm in better shape now already. Um, drop another kilo or two um, and just look like a boxer again. <laughs> but so you think what you could potentially get to 140 pounds? Uh, possibly, possibly. Let me see how the welter is now because I want big, one big difference I noticed is the two year gap is boxing wise, I'm happy. I jumped straight back in, that's not an issue. But I think I need to learn my body a little bit again, being in the gym, um, food, weight, because that two year gap, because I've not made weight, I've not done certain things, I feel like that first jump back in really helped me see where my little mistakes were so for the next one in December I'm gonna then make sure that 
just in better shape in general. Um, probably know my body a little better now as I'm a bit older. Yeah, that's an interesting point because especially as you had up till then just fought the journeyman, it's not the same as making championship level weight and knowing how you feel. So you might have to do a bit of experimenting with that. But now you've had a taste of championship level boxing, I can imagine that's the level that you're going to want to be operating. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think even before it was a case of that's what I wanted to jump to. It was just the injury, the injury that postponed it. And I always felt that I enjoyed the amateurs because everything was competitive. Whatever level I was at, it was always relative. So as a novice, every fight was hard. As an elite, you've got to think, you've got to box, you've got to do everything. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed being... It makes me want to be in the gym more when I'm actually having to train properly and not coming in for a show as such. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, any idea of uh, fight before the end of the year? Are you going to try and get out again? Uh, so far, I'm booked in on the Nielsen show, end of the first week of December. I don't remember if it's the 6th or 7th. Um, six, yeah. six, yeah. Yeah, it's that one. Anything to do with opponents, um, Alex is sorting all that out. So I won't mention names, I won't mention this. Alex is the man for that. Um, so I'm getting ready now for that. I've got up until then to get myself you know, properly in shape. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, you have something of a tune up after that hard fight and then go again next year. Um, but like you said, you're, you're just uh, seeing where, where the land lies. Um, it won't be a tune up. It won't be a tune up. No. We're going with someone. Alex is sorting everything out. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it won't be a journeyman. Uh, but will it be a 10 rounder? Whatever it is. Okay, that, <laughs> like I said, you're a fighter through and through. Um, okay, well, uh, no shortage of uh, fighters around your weight class. Welter and Light Welter, probably the two most competitive weight classes in, you know, in the country, or if not the world. So no shortage of good opponents. Um, are you a full-time pro? Uh, no. Um, I, I train as much as I can. Uh, but the truth is, unless you're, you know, a big sponsor deal, I mean, I'm doing, I think whatever, 20, 30, 35. I think this week I'm on about 35 hours a week doing work and then I'm coming in here and doing everything else, same as everyone else is. Um, but I think that's same as everyone. I think that's also maybe one of the reasons why in the last two years it looks like everyone started fighting each other. People are actually in the small hall shows, four, five, six fights in, everyone's just doing what they need to. I think, I think the perception, perception has changed and people are actually seeing that that one loss or draw or tough fight will help them or push them forward rather than pushing them back like people used to think. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think we've seen with some of the, the guys who've got a lot of backing, they have 10, 12 knockovers, then they have a hard fight and they can't catch. Well, I think even if you watch like the Riyadh shows right now, people are start, suddenly starting to realise these big power punching, you know, big fighters, wherever it is, they're losing to unknown names because those unknown names are the ones, they're staying unknown because they're, un they're avoided for quite a while. They're real tough fights. Whereas, you know, just because you're a ticket seller doesn't mean you're good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we, we've, seen, uh, we've seen quite a lot of that. Um, what is your day job, by the way? Uh, I do coaching at the Islington Boxing Club and I do classes here and there. So I've, done, I've turned that into my current career because it helps me stay in the gym. And I've, you know, anytime I need to train, I can be around the gym and keep, you know. Oh, that, that's great. At least, you're, yeah, your day job's are involved in the sport. Uh, some fighters have to go and work on construction and then, then do the training, which is pretty hard. Um, all right, so, uh, yeah, future's looking up for you. Um, wh where do you want to be this time next year? Holding a title of some kind and just pushing forward in my career. I'm not sure where exactly now. You know, I've got faith in my team here that they're going to help me progress, um, but definitely holding a title in my hands. And the dream <laughs> before your career's up? Do you know, I'm, I'm just going along, same as the amateurs, I'm going fight by fight, I'm enjoying the process and I think this is the first time I've been back in the gym since the loss where one of the guys said to me, oh, you're, like, you're smiling in the gym again, which is true because now there's actually offers, there's fights on the table, I've got dates, it's no longer, you know, you've got a date shows off, you've got a fight, he's out, so now it's a bit more secure, I feel a bit more happy again. Happy fight is uh, dangerous and that's, that's the most important thing if you're enjoying it again. Um, and tell us, have you got any interests outside of boxing? Any hobbies outside of boxing? Uh, do you know what? I, I think since bo with boxing and work, you know, being an adult, er life just takes over in general. I'm not the most, um, what's the word, social person. I'm generally just at home, me and my wife, watch some TV, go out cinema, get a bit of food. I'm quite quiet like that. Otherwise, when I'm in the gym, that's where, you know, I see the most people joke around. Um, I don't know. I think since with boxing and work, it's all taken over. 
I wish I had more hobbies. Maybe when I do leave boxing, maybe then I'll have more. But for now, it's just just life and work. Yeah. That's probably the best way to be. Someone like Arthur better be. Everyone's thinking you look a bit like with a beard. He doesn't have any hobbies either. So, <laughs> yeah, if it's if your life's all boxing, uh, you'll be going far. All right, Slavisha. Uh, yeah, it's been great meeting you for the first time. Um, yeah, we're going to keep an eye on you. Look forward to some big fights. <laughs>